Привет, Stalkers! My name is Sarah Customs and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are talking about a topic that's quite important for me and that has spread some controversy in the past. It is the right amount of weathering for your Stalker costume. And this is a question that all of you at some point when you make a costume will have to ask yourself. How distressed should my costume look like? I've made a video on that in the past, but I thought I should make a video on the decent topic of why the right amount of weathering is important and how we can determine it. When we want to determine how our costumes should look like, we have to ask ourselves two questions before starting to buy stuff. First of all, who is our character? What is his background? And his background is highly important because his background actually determines the grade of gear that he has when he enters the zone. So is he maybe just a bandit, a wanted criminal that needs a place to hide? Is he maybe a tourist? We know that in the Stalker games tourist exists. Like in Shadow of Chernobyl, uh, Zidorovich actually gives us the sunrise suit of a tourist that has been modified. Is he a mercenary or is he working for the Akhats? Those questions will determine how his gear in the zone looks like at the beginning. When we have a character that is longer in the zone, we have to consider another thing. Does he still hold onto his first gear? And if not, what does his gear look like right now? This question can be answered by looking at the potential life circumstances of your character. Meaning, is he someone who has access to repair facilities, equipment, gear, spare parts, maybe skilled craftsmen who can do this? Or is he forced to rely on whatever he finds because maybe he's just a dirty bandit who can't enter any faction's base without being instantly shot? Those two questions can give you two very important answers. First of all, what's his standard of gear that he has? And secondly, what's the condition of said gear? And if you can answer those two questions, you can start assembling your stalker costume and probably start to look around and buy parts for it. So why isn't my gear completely trashed? Well, first of all, the character that I am portraying is a true loner. Meaning he tries to somehow avoid differences with other factions. He doesn't get involved in firefights unless he needs to. He just goes his way and tries to survive. Doing so, he works for the Eggheads and also occasionally for duty. Even though he's not part of any faction, thanks to his somewhat decent reputation, He's not a top stalker by any means. He still has access to most of the faction's facilities in Rostock and at the mobile labs from the Eggheads. And as we know in the books, there are working showers in Rostock. I mean, of course, it's duty, they need showers. <laughs> but a shower is an important place because it's one of the few places where you can actually decontaminate your body, clean your body, and probably also clean your clothing. I mean, if you don't want to go to Londromat in Pripyat, washing your stuff at the Rostock is pretty much the best option that you have as a stalker. And taking care of yourself and washing your stuff is important, especially in the zone. It's an isolated system. You don't want to catch any serious disease. You don't want to catch any parasites in that zone because getting proper medication will be not only difficult, but probably also expensive. And everything that comes from the outer world to the zone tends to be rather expensive in the zone. So yeah, a stalker would probably clean himself and his gear when he has the option to. Also his guns would not look completely rusted and trashed, but he would kind of try to care for them because you have to consider the zone is a dangerous place, you can't afford to have a broken and rusty gun if you have the resources to care for it. Because sometimes, and I'm sure I don't have to tell the stalker veterans about that here, the jamming of a gun can decide between life and death. And often it decides towards death. And death is something we do not want in a zone. So we want to make money and avoid death. <laughs> and that's why we care for our gear. Also you have to consider the outer world still functions and exists. Meaning you can get stuff from the outer world just costs you, but you still can get it. So you can get replacement parts, you can get sewing kits, you can get uh, spare fabrics. And you can get that. And you have artisans in the zone that will 
fix your stuff if you can't do it yourself. This is something very important because if you have access to those things, you can have a gear that's in somewhat, somewhat decent condition, but also looking used. So when we want to sort in how rugged our costumes should look like, we should probably just make a scale. And the scale starts here at Fresh Rookie and ends at full-blown Mad Max. So the condition of our gear is probably a spectrum and it probably starts somewhere down there at Fresh Rookie. You know, clean, nice, everything is fine. And it ends at fully-blown Mad Max. Like, completely trashed gear thrown together with anything you could find. And let me just give you a spoiler. Costumes that are full-blown Mad Max costumes in the zone. They are just not so believable and authentic. Because the zone is still a somewhat functional society with its subgroups. You still have access to facilities, you still have access to goods from the outer world. You still have the opportunity to care for yourself or to be in a social group that does so. And in the worst case, a stalker can always rely on taking gear from dead stalkers. This will not look nice, you know, because bullet holes and blood and maybe partially being mauled doesn't provide a somewhat decent gear, but that's the worst thing that you can take. If your gear looks like it came out straight out of a meat grinder anomaly, would you really take that gear? Like, I mean, if you have read the book Roadside Picnic, you know what the meat grinder anomaly does to people. If you have seen the stalker games, you know what this anomaly does to people. Why would you wear a gear that's so completely trashed if you have any other option? And you have those options. So we can conclude that almost everyone in the zone that is not a wanted bandit has access to any kind of facility that he can either wash his stuff at or at least maintain it on a basic level that it doesn't fall apart. And that's good, because that leads to a higher life expectancy. So let's just visualize how the gears of different factions, on average, should look like. Here is the standard of the gear, and down here is the condition of the gear. First of all, let's start with mercenaries. And I think mercenaries should have a rather high standard of gear, and a rather high condition of gear, because they are professional fighters, they are paid contractors from the outer world, and usually they don't stay in the zone for too long. Meaning their gear should be rather good and rather well maintained. Second, bandits. Bandits are probably one of the most diverse and versatile groups in the zone besides loners, and I think that for bandits everything is somewhat acceptable. You can have a full Gopnik bandit that has completely trashy, poor gear, a tracksuit, leather jacket, a Makarov pistol. And you can have someone probably close to Zultan that has a decent gear. I would say their standard of gear is rather poor. Not only, but rather poor. You will be able to find most of levels of gear among bandits, just like how we'd be able to find most of gear conditions among bandits. On the average I would say they are worse supplied than loner stalkers, and this is the next group we should talk about. The loner stalkers, they are usually the ones that have access to most facilities, because they don't really have any enemies in the zone, meaning they can maintain their stuff, and just like the bandits I would say loners have rather mediocre gear, some of them have good gear, some of them have pretty bad gear, and the condition should be on average better than uh, the gear from the bandits, just because they have access to outer world stuff and they have access to uh, the facilities of the different factions, even though it will probably cost some money. Monolith. Yeah, it's the elephant in the room. Somehow monolith soldiers tend to get good weapons and they tend to get good gear. We have no idea where these things are coming from, but they have access to them, and when we stick true to the lore of the games, we do not see any 
monolith soldiers with trashy guns and trashy gear so i would say their standard of gear is above average and their condition of gear is also above average those guys are no joke they are better supplied than most stalkers in the zone duty and freedom both have access to good gear and both of them have the opportunity to maintain it and by being involved in a larger social structure they also probably have professionals that do that for them so i don't think that among duty and freedom you will find stalkers with bad gear like they have at least some standard that you should be able to provide and those standards i think are also enforced by the higher ranking members so they will not allow any duty or freedom member to run around in completely trash clothing a duty member or a freedomer that's highly respected among others he will probably have good gear and well maintained gear even though it will have signs of weathering because he will probably not just chill in his base and smoke weed all the time right normally i would say that clear sky has a similar level of equipment to freedom and uh, duty but there is one major difference clear sky is an isolated community they live in a remote location they are rather from themselves so i would say that their standard of gear is rather mediocre and the condition is rather worse than duty of freedom because resources are limited the access to outward resources are limited and also the access to professionals who maintain their gear is limited so on the gear you'll probably see like patches seams uh, cable ties uh glued stuff stuff like that their gear would have more signs of mud and dirt than others because they're literally living in a swamp it's my life. Ecologist. And what I will say now is the reason why my character works for them. They have access to outer world goods and they probably have the best access to outer world goods and the options to maintain these goods. They have the opportunity to not only clean their gear, they have the opportunity to work on their gear and they have professionals doing so. So I would say that ecologists probably, even though they have a rather mediocre standard of gear, we remember the suits are not the best gear that you can find they have the best condition definitely the best condition of gear in the zone renegades yeah the same as bandits just edgier i would say that military has good gear but also used gear you will not find poorly equipped military members in the zone so when you're portraying military soldier make sure you get the right gear and also military has the option to take care of their gear but having a military soldier that has to fix stuff himself because the supplies are not coming in time. It's believable and authentic. And having a decent amount of dirt on your costume is also reasonable and authentic. So, military, high level of gear, high condition. Should we talk about cut content? Yeah. ISG, the International Scientific Group. The factory that has been cut from Stalker Clear Sky and that Scar worked for. When we check out the gear, they have reskinned models of the model of suit so they are probably well equipped they are well funded and they are well experienced even though that they are wiped out by blowouts but we don't know much about the faction but i would say that a faction like this should be rather well equipped so yeah that's my conclusion this is how i would say an authentic grade of gear should look like for the different factions in the stalker games of course, variations are acceptable. So feel free to have someone who is really completely trashed, who has made several expeditions in the zone, probably is an alcoholic and has a tough time. Go ahead, man. Your costume should tell a story and it should be your story. And you decide which story you want to tell. So based on this, why does my character look how he looks like? He's a stalker with access to facilities and even though for a price to outside goods he has the option to wash his stuff he has the option to fix the stuff and if necessary even though he will avoid it to buy new parts for his gear or completely new gear his gun is his life insurance that's why it looks used but still well maintained 
and working for duty or the eggheads is probably one of the best options a stalker can have in his own, but that's just my take. What is your take? How would you earn your money in the zone? Let's try to get an exchange going and to hype us up for the next stalker part, because as we know, in the stalker games we always play a role that has been made for us. But maybe some of us will be able, when the mods come out, to play our own character in a free mode. And I'm really looking forward to this. I am more than hyped for the new stalker game, I have seen it at Gamescom, it was breathtaking. and. I'm especially, especially hyped for the mods that will come out because this thing is on Unreal 5. We will have a lot of mods and I hope that those mods will enable us to play the character that we want to play and portray in the zone. Boy, unless my old Soviet Vostok watch is not playing a trick on me, it must be about time to end the video for now. My name is Terran Costumes and I am very thankful that you guys are part of my journey through the zone. And I hope you will stay with me for further expeditions. So if you want to follow me through the zone, make sure to follow my channel, leave a like on this video, leave a comment, and we will see each other on our next journey when we talk about hideouts. Until then, good hunting stalkers. Dos vidania.